Wyatt's and from the Useless Crafter. So I have been making mugs. I've made three so far and I only have one that's here actually in my art room because I gave the other two away already. But I love it. And I'm gonna talk a, a little bit about it too because I feel as if my, if you're, if you follow me on Instagram, um, there might be some confusion as to whether or not how much I really like this product and whatever. So we'll definitely talk about that. But um, I think it's kind of hard for you to see because of the lighting. Oh, there it is. So this is Tennis Mom Hot Shots. We love our tennis coach and we love our tennis group. So I've been making, a, all three of my mugs have been tennis, tennis related. But um, you see how on this one, what I did was I took, I weeded the big blue part. So what you're seeing on the screen from the infusible ink sheet, I pulled off the blue and what's left was the line and the words um, and same thing on this side. It's all the words. But what I love about the infusible ink sheets, and they've been a favorite for a while, I did it, you know, I like it on the t-shirts as well, is that you could, depending on your design, and I did this on the other design, I wish I still had the mug, but I gave it away. Um, you can use the same cut. So on this one, if I pulled off the blue, the blue can be on the mug. So what would be white is all the words, kind of like the way you see it here. And then what you weed out, the words and the little circle and whatever, you can then make this mug. So from the same design, the same infusible ink sheet, because you're weeding one, it's sort of like the weeded areas, I don't know what they call it, the the leftovers or I don't know. <laughs> I need to look that up. But, but you can use whatever you would have normally weeded out. That is one mug. And then what you have left is another mug. So I'm going to show you that. Um, but let's get started and do this one. So we're going to recreate this. What I realized on my first mug was the reason why I did this little wave is because my first mug was straight down and it looked kind of boring. It just ended right where the mug handle was. So I thought, oh, maybe it would be cooler if we had like, um, a wavy ending. But how I did this is I went into projects because I didn't, uh, I mean, so many people have made mugs. <laughs> and so I didn't want to have to like reinvent the wheel, right? Um, I wanted the dimensions without having to worry about it. So let's type in, um, shoot. Hold on, sorry. I I don't know how many of you guys follow me on Instagram, but I bought a new keyboard, which I love. It's the one that looks like a typewriter. It feels awesome, but man, it um, it times out. So I have to wait for it to get back on in order to type it. So I'm trying to find my, oh, here's my other keyboard. All right, I'm just gonna use my other, my old keyboard. Coming. <laughs> Okay, so let's see. We're going to type in mugs, and it really doesn't matter which one you choose, right? Um, I did choose the bearded one where they drew it in because I thought it was so cute, but I don't even see it on here. Um, I'm going to recreate my steps. The other thing that, okay, so I have the mug press, and I love it, and I also have an 8-in-1 heat press, and he, I feel like just by explaining how I have this eight in one. So, oh, so pick this one and I'm going to, we're going to customize it. So I have the eight in one. I didn't even realize I had the eight in one. The only reason why I know this now is because I went to look in my Amazon account because that's where I ordered it to see how long I've had this five in one heat press. Turns out I, it's an eight in one heat press um, that I've had for almost two years, definitely well over a year. So the crazy thing is I've been using, you know, it's like a one in one heat press. I, I use it for the heat, like to press my clothes, uh, bags, you know, the flat, the flat 15 by 15. And I love it. There is a huge difference between an easy press and an actual real heat press. I definitely hands down recommend the heat press. Um, and also because for not that much more, 
you get all the extra attachments, right? So my heat press ended up being just a little bit under $300, including tax and everything. So less than $300. The easy press, I mean, you're gonna have to choose. You're either gonna get an easy press or a mug press. You can't get both um, with the same price. So for a little bit more, you get everything, right? And in my case, it's an eight in one. It, um, but that's how bad it is, is that I didn't even know. I, I, I don't even know, I can't name all eight. I thought I had five and I've never used the mug press. Um, it looks a little complicated and so I didn't read the directions and now it's been well over a year. I don't even know if I could find the directions. I know where all my attachments are because I put it all in one drawer. <laughs> so I think now I'm actually gonna pull it out and really give it a shot because now that I've used the Cricut Mug Press, I feel like I understand it a little bit more. So if you're gonna be like me, I mean, I do recommend the heat press because the pressure that you get from, from that heat press is amazing. There's no way I can put my weight down on whatever I'm pressing. Um, it, you can't beat that. So I do recommend that. And again, from a price standpoint, you can't argue it. For a little bit more, you get so much more functionality. But if you have a little extra money <laughs> laying around and this is something that you wanna do, the mug press literally has one button. It turns on, it tells you when it's ready, and then when you put your mug in and you close up the chamber, it's a little lever that you push down to close up your mug. If the timer starts, it figures out how much time it needs based on how cool your room is, based on the temperature of the mug. Um, and then the lights pop up and then it beeps when it's done. I mean, it is childproof. So, and the mugs come out super, super cute. Like really, you know, just, I mean, it's a feasible ink. So it's flushed in, it looks great. So, um, that's why. So if <laughs> I've made three mug press or three mugs with a Cricut mug press, I've made zero with my eight and one that I've had for well over a year. So that's, you know, I mean, it's it just reminds me of a gym membership. You either, if you don't use it, doesn't matter how cheap the monthly payment is, you're, it's wasteful. Um, but if you have one that's more expensive, but it somehow motivates you to go, or you like the facilities, then it's worth it, right? So it's, it's a personal decision because from a um, just, emotions out of it, personality out of it, hands down, you gotta get the multi-use heat press. There, you can't argue with that. All right, <laughs> so here is this. It gives you the measurements already. So what I did was I took this piece and then I just deleted the drawing. So here I'm gonna delete the drawing. So now I sort of have like a blank template of what my mug should look like. This was a little weird to me. I don't understand why they did it this way. Because what happens is uh, the heat's gonna stop somewhere right around here. So you're gonna have a straight line down. I guess it's just easy to wrap around. So this little hole goes over to here and it wraps right where your handle is because there's no heat going right here. So you're not gonna transfer anything in this little section. Um, but I, I left it like this because I thought, well, maybe there's a good reason for it. But when I went to press it, I just cut it with scissors to make it straight. All right, so here this is. Let's go into images. And I'm gonna recreate the same one even though I know you're not gonna be into it. <laughs> so I'm searching for tennis, but it gives you how, an idea of how to design and how to do your own. So let's scroll down. There's like a cute little, here it is. So here's Tennis Mom. I'm gonna click on this, insert image. And because I'm using the infusible ink sheets, I this doesn't, it doesn't matter that it's different colors. So I'm just going to weld it and make it one piece. The other reason is because I'm going to want to slice this from this piece, right? So I wanna make it smaller, make it fit to your mug. So here, um, and then I did the word hot shots because that's the name of the group. It's so cute. They're, um, I think it's, so hot shots is for, uh, 
five-year-olds, five and six-year-old kids, so it's so cute. All right, so here is Hot Shots. I want it bent around this thing, so I'm gonna go to curve, and I'm gonna curve it. So make sure that you have it the size that you want from the text, like how big. Okay, so this is still a little bit big for me, right? So I'm going to make it smaller. And so see, when you make it smaller, then you need to go back to your curve and curve less. So I don't know why I'm struggling right now. So let's move this down a little bit so I can see it better. Okay, so here's Hot Shots. I'm gonna put it more, maybe right around there. Okay, so let's curve it a little bit more. There, that looks good to me. Okay, so Hot Shots. Um, so now let's slice this out of this piece, okay? So if you remember, you can only slice two items at one time. So I can't slice Hot Shots, Tennis Mom, and the sheet. So I'm gonna slice out Hot Shots and the sheet first. And I can't do that because, um, let me see, I think I picked up too much. Let me see, okay. So see, I only picked up two items. I know I picked up two items because these two items are um, in a darker gray, right? So they're selected, but I can't slice it out because it's grayed out, right? And do you know why? It's because each one of these letters is considered its own thing. It's, so I need to grab this and I'm gonna weld it. By welding it, I'm making it one item so see how it changed from the letter H to the actual whole thing, Hot Shots. So I'm gonna grab Hot Shots and the template. And I don't know why it's not letting me slice right now. Hold on, what is, oh, let me detach this for some reason. I don't, it had it as attached. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna grab these two items and slice. And there's always sort of clues as to why you can't do certain things, right? I mean, design space can be glitchy, but that, that wasn't it. <laughs> All right, and then because I sliced it, the, um, the items moved out of order. So I can't see this anymore, which is fine. I don't need to see it. I know it's right here. So I'm gonna take my cursor and go up here and grab the tennis mom and the template but not touch anything with hot shots. And you'll see I was able to slice it out even though I left my welded piece in here and everything's here. Okay, so now that I've sliced everything, I'm gonna move this so you can see. So now this piece has everything sliced out of it, right? This we can delete. Okay, so now we have this. And then what I did was I, you know, we call her Skimmy and I put all her nicknames, but we'll just do one, okay? So here's the text and um, I'm gonna do my favorite, one of my favorite fonts, it's Hannah Berry Koo. It's from Creative Fabrica. I love this one because it looks, and I'm gonna type it in, it's right where my face is. So give me a second as it comes in, it'll come up here. Um, I like this font because like I said, it's very whimsical. It feels kind of delicate because it has all these little flourishes, um, but it's not. Because you can see even the eye right here, it's still a little thick, right? So I, I like this font a lot. It's from Creative Fabrica. You can get it from any of my links. All right, until they update this. They told us that kerning is coming. So that means anything that is cursive is when you type it out, it will come connected. It won't look crazy like this. But until that happens, the way I do it is I just ungroup it and I start moving things manually. Some people like to go into the letter space and decrease the letter space. And um, I think this one, it still won't work, okay? The reason why is because if you look, you can see the distance between the S and the K is less, like a, a block and a half, right? It's tiny. But 
the distance between my I and my M is almost two full blocks. So I can decrease this, this letter space, up to a certain point. But after that, you're still going to need to move it because look, right now, my S and my K are practically touching, right? But these two, these three letters right here, they're not touching. So let me decrease the letter space one more. So now this is touching, but see, it just doesn't, this one is actually a little bit more symmetrical than some of the others that I've seen. So you could keep decreasing it, but honestly, I just ungroup it and I move it over a little bit. Um, I also prefer like a very bouncy font. So I like to, my letters to move up and down a little bit more than maybe some of you guys. But so you see how the M's, they're not on the same line. And you can do that with this as well, like a little bit low. Okay, but regardless, in the end, what you wanna do is you wanna grab all of this and you wanna weld it. Because if you didn't weld it, what would happen is where the S ends, it's gonna cut into the K, even though it's over, well, it's worse that it's overlapping because it actually will cut out the full letter on each one and it's gonna look really funky. So you want to weld it. Now, once this is in here, you wanna resize it, of course. And let's say you wanna put it right in the middle. Now, when I say middle, you could do a couple things. You can grab this and actually align it and you wanna align it center vertically. Oh, I had it right in the middle, so it didn't, it didn't move. All right, grab these two items and slice. And we'll move that, we don't need that. So now we're left with, with our piece. When you go to make it, you wanna make sure that you mirror it. If you're using an infusible ink sheet, you need to mirror it because you need the ink side, just think of it like as HTV, the ink side then goes touching the mug, so it needs to be um, reversed. So you mirror it, you cut it, it's gonna look like this. And um, here's my sheet. So you're, it's just like HTV in, a, in that sense, you put your, um, your sticky side down and then your material is, is sticking up and then you cut and you weed and then you press So here's your mug. I hope that was helpful. We will be doing more designs I'm gonna I'm gonna think of some other fun ones to do. Oh, but wait, sorry. Let me cancel out of this. I Actually want to show you that little wave, right? So if you don't like this and you want a more um Fancy edging I guess go into images and you can you can spend hours looking at this. But what I did was, I know I wanted that wavy look, so I typed in wave. But you can type in edge, I, I that worked for me as well. So let's look for something, let's see, oh, I used this one. So click on it, insert image. And because we're slicing, you see how this came in, it's two pieces, we don't need the two pieces. So just delete one, I'm gonna delete this one. Okay, then I'm gonna take this right here and what I did was I duplicated it. I put it over here and I wanted to make sure that I was sort of even. So I grabbed the two blue waves and I did a line center so that they are symmetrical in that weird sense. <laughs> and then I sliced one edge at a time. So here's this side. And then I'm gonna go, once that slices, I'm gonna slice over here. And then this is your new piece. So this you can delete. And that would just give you like a, you know, like a little cool edging. And we're done. <laughs> All right, let me know what you wanna see. You know what else is coming up? I was so excited about this little guy, um, the mug press, that I went and got a sublimination printer. 
Well, I need to convert it to be a sublimination printer, but it's a brand new printer. It just arrived yesterday, so that's coming as well. So hopefully you'll join me on this journey of getting a sublimination printer. The reason is because I'm not, I'm not really doing it for the mugs per se, although I do like the idea of the mugs. I feel like I'm gonna be doing a lot of mugs, but um, I like it for the shirts. So if you haven't used infusible ink, think of all the t-shirts that you get, you see at Target, um, it's flushed, right? Like you can't, you don't feel the vinyl sticking up or the HTV sticking up. So that's what infusible ink is. That's what sublimination is, where it's just flushed in, it's into the fabric, it's never gonna peel off. And so I really wanted to do it for that, for book bags, for sweatshirts, all of that stuff. Um, so anyway, hopefully you'll join me on that journey and then let me know what else you want to see. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.